Hi everyone, I'm David Fisher, and this is Presidential Chronicles, a series of books and videos on American history as seen through the lives of the presidents of the United States. This episode is from the life of Theodore Roosevelt, and the focus is love and heartbreak. Now, Roosevelt had had a flirtatious relationship with Edith Caro throughout much of his youth, uh, known her almost his entire life, and it's starting to get a bit serious in his first couple of years of college. Then all of a sudden, after his sophomore year, summer of 1878, they have a big fight of some sort, never really knew the details, never really came out, but their relationship was over and she was out of his life. Now, this was a really emotional time for Roosevelt. His father had just passed away the previous year, break up with Edith. He's actually got a lot of money coming in from his inheritance. He starts spending it. A pretty robust social life is ensuing. But then he meets Alice Lee. This is his fall of his junior year at Harvard. A friend of his, Dick Saltonstall, introduces him to his cousin, Alice. She's 17 at the time. He's almost 20. And Roosevelt is head over heels in love from almost the very beginning. He starts courting her, spending weekends, first of all, at the Saltonstall home where Alice was staying. Then it's weekend uh, during the week in the evenings. Didn't care that his studies were starting to suffer. He was focusing entirely on Alice. In fact, it was that year, his junior year in college, he proposes marriage for the first time. She says, I'm not so sure yet. She demurs. She wants a little bit more time to get to know this guy. She certainly likes him, spending plenty of time with him, but not quite ready for marriage. Well, he doesn't give up. This is Theodore Roosevelt, and he keeps going month after month after month, and finally, eight months after his first proposal, she finally says yes and agrees to be his wife. He's head over heels excited. He notes in his journal, after much pleading, my own sweet, pretty darling consented to be my wife. Oh, how bewitchingly pretty she looked. Oh, how I shall cherish my sweet queen. How she, so pure and sweet and beautiful, can think of marrying me, I cannot understand. But I praise and thank God it is so. This was the nature of the way he wrote about Alice, uh, both in his journal as well as in his letters to her, filled with sort of gushing romanticism and emotion and passion. She wasn't quite as emotional in her correspondence, but they were definitely together and looking forward to getting married. Now, Roosevelt first had to graduate from college, which he does, finishes 22nd in his class. Then, while the Lees are planning the wedding, Roosevelt and his brother Elliot head to the Midwest for a six-week hunting trip. They have a great time, but he really is missing Alice and more and more letters about how he's looking forward to getting home and moving on with his life with his wife-to-be. She actually then starts to reciprocate in some of that passion and the emotion. And she says how much she's missing his, his, her teddykins and how she can't wait now as well to be with him for the rest of her life. So the big day finally arrives. It's actually Roosevelt's 22nd birthday, October 27th of 1880, where they get married, they tie the knot, they head off to the honeymoon. Roosevelt calls it the best honeymoon anyone could ever have. And just a couple of months later, he notes in his journal, Thus ends by far the happiest year I have ever spent, for in this year I have won the fairest and purest and sweetest of women for my wife. I never conceived it possible that there could be such a bright, sunny, unselfish girl. I can never express how I love her. And if I should love her as much and as tenderly, it would not be nearly as much as she deserves. Pretty happy guy. Well, he also has to figure out what to do now for a career. Now, he's got plenty of money. He doesn't really have to work, at least not right now, but, but he wants to start a career. And so he decides, you know what? I'll go to law school. He enrolls at Columbia Law School. He doesn't like it very much. He doesn't like the law. Roosevelt has this very much of this sort of sense of righteousness, of moral right and wrong, and always wants to just figure out what the right thing to do is and go do it. Whereas in the legal profession, he's being taught this adversarial relationship where there's sort of two versions of the truth, one against the other, and that's just not the way he thought. So he actually starts arguing with his professors. It's not going very well. And he says, you know what? After a few months, I need a break from this. So he and Alice head off to Europe for a real honeymoon, horrifically bad seasickness on the way over. But once they get there, they have a fabulous time, turn around, come back, and he's thinking, law is not for me. I think I'm going to do something different. And he does, he gets involved in a profession that his friends, his family, think is a terrible idea. He gets involved in politics. Now, politics in this era was really considered to sort of be a low profession. 
full of corruption. This is not something of someone of Roosevelt's class would necessarily get involved in, especially at such a young age. But, you know, he had been really influenced by his father and the impact that his father had had on his community, not as a politician, but as a philanthropist, someone who had just done a lot of good works. And he felt as a politician, he could have a similar impact on his community. Now, there was never a question that he was going to be a Republican because this was the party of Lincoln, the party of the Union. This was his, uh, his mindset when it came to politics. And so he just starts hanging out at the local Republican establishment, which is in a barn-like structure above a tavern. And he starts meeting some of these grizzled old veterans from the political wars of New York City. And they take a liking to him and they decide they want to run him for state office. And so Theodore Roosevelt is put up for office and he wins his first election by about 1,500 votes. And he all of a sudden at the age of 23 is a New York State Assemblyman. I was the youngest man in the State Assembly when he moves to Albany. And Alice, of course, is very much with him. But he is an aggressive reformer anyway. Age didn't matter to him, and he didn't really care all that much what other people thought. He went and attacked the corruption that he saw. He called it by its name. He proposed legislation and policies that would counter the corrupt sides of, of New York uh, politics and New York life. Got a lot of praise for that. Certainly made himself a name for himself by getting his name in the newspaper. He also made a lot of enemies for this sort of young upstart coming in to tell both Republicans and Democrats what he thought, but he didn't care. This is the only way that he sort of could do anything throughout his whole life. And of course, again, Alice is very much with him. It's then in 1883 that she brings the great news that she's pregnant. Now, Roosevelt had always wanted a big family. He had come from a pretty big family. He believed in big families. He couldn't wait to get started. Now, it was a kind of a difficult pregnancy, and so, Alice basically stayed in New York City while Roosevelt during the week went to Albany. He came back on weekends. He was as supportive as he possibly could, but he was also worried not only about her, but also about his mother. His mother, Mitty, had caught a fever and it wasn't breaking and it was still weeks on end and she was not doing well. And so the difficult pregnancy, his mom's not doing well. He's back in Albany during the week. It was a tough time. Finally, the big day comes, February 12th, 1884. He gets the telegram, his wife has given birth to a baby girl, he's passing out cigars, when a second telegram comes. This one is an ominous one. Come home and come home now. Your mother's not doing well, and Alice is also struggling to recover from the birthing process. So he gets on the first train that he can, agonizingly slow on the ride home, finally arrives, and his brother Elliot meets him at the door and tells him there is a curse on this house. He immediately finds out what Elliot means. His mother is near death and Alice is moving in and out of consciousness. And in fact, February 14th, Valentine's Day of 1884 is the worst day of Theodore Roosevelt's life. His mother dies that morning and in the same house that afternoon, his 22 year old wife, the mother of his brand new baby girl dies in this same house. He doesn't know what to do. He's distraught beyond belief. He notes in his journal a giant X with the words, the light has gone out of my life. And that's exactly how he felt. He's numb as he goes through the double funeral for his wife and his mother. And then he has to figure out what to do. And what he does is a interesting reaction. He was so emotionally invested in the relationship with Alice Lee that he actually found the only thing he could do was eliminate every semblance of her from his life. Everything was too painful. Her letters, notes in his journal, at least most of his letters, most of the notes in his journal, pictures, whatever it was, he got rid of them. He didn't want to talk about Alice. In fact, he never talked about Alice Lee the rest of his life. When he wrote his memoirs after his presidency, he tells his entire life story. He never mentions Alice Lee. It's his coping mechanism to try to get beyond this tragic death. Now, one of the things that makes it even more complicated is he has a baby girl that they named Alice. In fact, he can't even call his daughter Alice. He calls her Baby Lee in these early days uh, after Alice's maiden name because the word Alice is so painful to him and he actually can't bring himself about to raise his daughter. He asks his sister, Bammy, 
to actually raise Alice in those first years of his life. He has a very rough relationship with Alice actually through his entire life, in part because he kind of abandons her for the first three years. And you know what Roosevelt does? He heads to the badlands of Dakota where he becomes a cattle rancher and a cowboy for the next three years to try to get his head back on straight after the heartbreak of the loss of his mother and Alice Lee Roosevelt on that fateful day, Valentine's Day, February 14, 1884. That is the story of Theodore Roosevelt and love and heartbreak from the life of Theodore Roosevelt. For more Presidential Chronicles, check out my books on Amazon.com and my, subscribe to my YouTube video channel. Until next time, I'm David Fisher, and this is Presidential Chronicles.